that, I'm going to go to Fahid, uh, and he's going to um, introduce us to the comedy scene in Saudi Arabia, which is, I have seen a few of them, and I can assure you it's really, really funny, and it's very cleverly done. So, Fahid, please go ahead and uh, share your, your website and everything that you have done with, with the audience today. I'm going to try to be brief and, and straight to the point. Um, w how the comedy scene started in Saudi Arabia is pretty much due to uh, the uh, rise of stand-up comedy. Um, and of course, that was fueled by the hundreds, thousands of uh, well-educated, well-traveled um, Saudi youth. And those, let's, let's say the, the age group under 30 is close to 75% of the population in Saudi Arabia right now. And annually, hundreds of thousands of students are being sent to the United States, Canada, the UK, and um, other um, schools um, worldwide, uh, reaching as far as Australia and New Zealand. So these guys, um, they not only get uh, their degrees, they also bring back their experiences with them. And um, this is pretty much what marked the beginning of the stand-up comedy scene in Saudi, in, uh, in Saudi Arabia specifically. <clears throat> the majority of uh, comedians that came up lately, oh wow, I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm used to, I mean, I'm used to performing in front of thousands of people, but this just, this seems so serious, so. <laughs> yeah, and, huh? <laughs> and I'm an, uh, thank you. And I'm in a thobe, and it's it's, it's really hot. And, uh, but uh, in general, that's how stand-up comedy uh, started with uh, with a few uh, a few uh, comedians who uh, who brought back their experiences from from college. I, for example, uh, went uh, to the University of Texas at Austin. Ooh, Longhorns. All right. <laughs> so, uh, so that's where I started uh, attempting stand-up comedy, pretty much. Uh, a couple of failed attempts, but then uh, it, uh, it kind of became a passion of mine, and I took that experience back with me to Saudi Arabia, and um, more comedians started popping up in Saudi because it became this, this n n new popular uh, genre, let's say. Uh, where the youth can express themselves, can express their uh, opinions freely, and um, thousands of people attend. So that was, it was, uh, it was a very popular uh, endeavor at that point. Uh, then, um, during, during these, the, these stand-up shows not only uh, turned out to be uh, just for stand-up comedy, they became creative hubs where, where creative individuals started meeting. That's where I met uh, director Ali Kelthami, who ended up becoming uh, the director for the first uh, monologue-based satire show that we have on YouTube, uh, La Iktar, uh, currently close to uh, one million subscribers, uh, more than 90 million views. Our total views for our network right now that started from that show has over one billion views right now. Um, three. <laughs> So three of our channels have uh, exceeded one million subscribers, and that's three out of 11 channels that uh, we produce for. Um, I think when we started doing stuff on YouTube, we never really imagined that we'd be getting these kind of views at all. Um, I met with Ali, and uh, we simply just wanted to talk about a, a few subjects that I couldn't cover in stand-up comedy shows, pretty much. and. Um, the visual aids, when it comes to filmmaking, um, help a lot in delivering a lot of the messages that we have. Uh, we started tackling a little more serious issues, uh, socio-political issues uh, that are interesting, especially to the youth. And, um, and we started uh, realizing that not only are we shaping content that represents uh, Saudi youth, but also that represents Saudi Arabia to international audiences as well. So that's when we started focusing also on the international appeal of uh, some of the shows that we've been doing. Um, we shot um, short film style episodes, satirical episodes in DC, 
Washington, D.C. Uh, we've shot uh, some in London, and um, we're planning on, on shooting more, of course, uh, in other countries. Um, so, well, let me, let me just show you some, some, sample of, of, some samples of our work on, on YouTube. Uh, could you please play the video? What are you doing here? الله شكله سعودي واضح من الخشه والخشم الكبير. لا يكون يحسبني اشرب. لا 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 خليني اصرف الموضوع بالجوال. اجل معاك بلاك بيري ها؟ وقاعد تكتب بسرعه. اه باين من جبهتك الكبيره دي انك سعودي. لا يحسبني انا اشرب. لازم اسوي نفسي ماني سعودي. هلا يا امي. تعرفون اللي جنبي هذا ايش؟ هذا من السلطات انتم في قضيه اشتباه انكم عصابه مكسيكيه ها؟ مسوين انكم عصا انت امك 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 تصل الو ابني ابني اكل لسن. ابني مسجون لسه تو ليست بيان بو وي دونت سبيك اير اسكت ولا كلمه نو ما نور No woman, no drive. No woman, no drive. Anni wa la tisal wa shali jarali. Allah, 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 what is the sound of Zaid? Allah is Zaid in a year. لا لا ما والله ماني مصدق ماني مصدق بلقيس هلا هلا كيف الحال؟ الحمد لله شو الاخبار؟ تمام والله العظيم انا 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 صراحه صراحة المهم جدا في هذه الدورة الانتخابية انها أول مرة تشارك المرأة كناخبة يعني صوت وكمرشحة يعني صوتون لها هذا طبعا سبب حالة أقرب شيء قال عنها هلا <تصفيق> So those are some of the uh, interesting subjects that we tackle in, in our shows. Uh, if you saw the, the one with the, the Saudis uh, posing as Mexicans, the reason is because um, they, that happened post the Boston Marathon events. So um, to kind of face uh, prejudice and, and try, to, try to basically blend in, they acted like they were Mexican. So. <laughs> so um, um, the one, uh, the one before that, victim of reputation. That's the title of it. Uh, we shot it in London, and it basically uh, was talking about the subcontext of, of Saudis judging each other when when traveling, and it's a very real thing. Um, I mean, one of the things that uh, Saudis tell each other um, about places to, to kind of like make them seem attractive, they, they usually say there are absolutely no Saudis there. You know, so <laughs> that that is. Because they're afraid of this, of this judgment, basically, um, that, that happens. Um, and you saw the cover, No Woman, No Drive. So <laughs> that is also uh, another thing. And uh, because of social media, um, uh, I mean, the, the social media penetration in Saudi is huge. It has the highest uh, penetration for, for Twitter in the world. Mm. Close to 59% of internet users have Twitter profile. Uh, right now in Saudi Arabia. Um, Instagram is the highest in the region as well, right now, currently in 2015. 52% um, Instagram penetration. And um, as of this year, Snapchat has also uh, uh, become pretty popular. Um, there have been like, what, five or six live stories from Saudi Arabia. 22%, um, um, that's the social media penetration for Snapchat in Saudi Arabia, and that's all in one year. It happened, basically went from zero to 22%. And um, social media not only had an impact on this whole new media movement on YouTube, um, Saudi Arabia being, uh, well, at some point, being the number one uh, source of uh, mobile YouTube views, uh, currently second only to Morocco, uh, because of Inta Ma'allim, personally, that's what I think. Um, so, uh, uh, but since it's in the top five, at least, uh, globally for YouTube views, 
it shows you uh, what kind of, it, it, that YouTube pretty much became more of an entertainment outlet, especially in a country where um, we don't have cinemas. Um, let's say uh, public outings are pretty limited. Uh, and it's just that uh, the whole, the whole uh, conservative feel uh, and the generation gap, just like the guys mentioned, um, that has been put as, as basically uh, a, limiting, a limiting roof over um, the majority of, which is the majority uh, of youth. Um, they found the, their voices and uh, uh, their entertainment online, pretty much. Um, be it their own voices by tweeting. Um, not only that, but even like with students that study abroad, they start showing their friends in college some of the stuff that we do on YouTube to show that Saudis kind of have a sense of humor. So that, that definitely broke uh, uh, a lot of stereotypes. Um, having English subtitles helped uh, reach uh, an American audience um, and, and uh, an English-speaking audience in general also in the UK. So um, that is probably one of the, uh, the biggest impact that uh, this has had on our work and our lives personally. I mean, I got married through social media. So. <laughs> But it's that, that kind of thing is, um, the sense of humor is, is uh, slowly changing um, with the spread of a lot of these uh, YouTube shows and entertainment content that we're distributing right now. And it's helping uh, uh, create social impact more than anything else. Uh, the Saudi population is not very political, so we didn't really have a political revolution, we had a social revolution. A lot of segments of society uh, now have voices uh, be it um, people who are uh, very liberal or very conservative or the people who are lost in between, uh, which is the silent majority back in the day, but now that silent majority has a voice. So I personally think regardless of, of anyone's beliefs, having a voice is, uh, is pretty much uh, a right that uh, everyone should have. So thank you social media for, for, for allowing us uh, to do this. And um, uh, it, it is also interesting to point out that uh, Saudi Arabia is number three globally in smartphone penetration as well. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Second only to uh, Korea and the UAE. So that, that's also another Gulf state that, that has a, a very large uh, smartphone penetration and we have a lot of, a lot of fans from there too because of that. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, time out. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, this is what we've been doing so far, and, and uh, uh, just one thing to close with, uh, an interesting uh, part is that we started getting the attention of traditional media outlets. Um, channels like Al Arabiya, for example, helped uh, produce a segment in our last episode that recently aired, and uh, Radio Monte Carlo thought it was a real uh, show and a, and a real segment, where we basically um, created this fake character that got popular on social media and people didn't tell whether it was true or not. So that kind of thing is, is really exciting for us, but people don't really know if we're serious or not. So that's, that's, that's pretty much what I have. Thank you. Thank you, Fahid. <laughs>